inspiration as a filmmaker has come from a lot of different places through the years. My mother basically spoon-fed me in front of soap operas. My father took me to see Star Wars when I was around three. Those were kind of my sparks to start, you know, to become a filmmaker, become a storyteller. I've continued to make films here and, and do my post-production work out in Los Angeles. With Last Scene, I came home on Christmas. I took a tour of the Cliff Dex Mill and I became inspired by the location. I wrote it the night before and uh, I emailed the script to Tommy. What, I think you got it at like 1 in the morning and... I was, uh, I got it at 1 o'clock in the morning and you told me to be at your house at 4.30 a.m. the next morning. So, you start filming at six. To film, so. to film, no, we started filming at five. I think. Five, oh. okay, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, you had you know a few hours to sleep and memorize the lines. <laughs> I wasn't sure where we were going to film the interrogation scene, and then we just happened to be in an abandoned coffee center with this huge window that looked like sort of a two-way mirror. So we had some track lighting already in there and uh, set up a few other lights, and we we really lucked out. I got ideas from everyone. It was a very collaborative effort. He needs to do something to get rid of those handcuffs before he gets up and walks. Well, out. actually, it wouldn't be up to you to get rid of the well, handcuffs. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't have to leave the officer. Yeah, and the, the next step. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't you the next step the before. Assume that. Yeah. Good thinking, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. No, I'm my friend Richard Langless had his eBay business in this mill, and, and, and ironically, it was uh, it was mostly Halloween props. So we were able to get this cool severed head. <laughs> oh yeah, I got one right in the basement. <laughs> now, where am I throwing to? Just so we're throwing this way. Okay. Okay, guys, quiet on the set. Go. see much of the severed head but what I did was I photoshopped Tommy's nose and eyes onto the head that we had so if you if you pause it you can see Tommy's expression <laughs> <laughs> the footage of the beginning credits was actually filmed by my mother she was doing good b-roll that day just like she's doing now and I hadn't hadn't necessarily planned on it but it just looked really well and then when I applied the filter you know it ended up in the final film thank you Kathy yeah. thank you Lance Gunberg was also a big help. He, uh, he's a local filmmaker here from New Bedford. He helped with the footage, he pushed me on the wheelchair, and he actually got upstairs for the shot when Tommy was running upstairs, um, because I have terrible fear, fear of heights. If you've all seen Vertigo, Jimmy Stewart, I'm about 10 times worse. <laughs> the basement was, was lit by our, our DP, Scott Cunha, and then the, you know we had some lighting in the uh, interrogation room as well. Most of the chase in the upper levels of the mill were lit naturally. But the thing with, with me that day was, was filming while we still had light, and it was in the winter, so around 5 or 6 o'clock yeah. we were going to lose our light. Adam Katz actually shot the first scene. It was his idea to shoot the puddle, and that was my idea in post to flop it upside down. And, and people seemed to like that shot, and I said, yeah, it's not my shot. It's <laughs> but I like to be open to those ideas because I, I don't want to miss out on a good opportunity. In some of the earlier cuts, it was a little more atmospheric. together with my house with, with cast and crew and I just wanted to show them the cut and, and, and ask them what they thought of it. So I got some really, really valuable feedback from that. Now the beginning credits audio, I gotta give I gotta give props to uh, uh, the star Chris Pappas because he did that audio about a year after the fact and I wanted to get it as real sounding as possible like he was chasing someone. So I had him do laps around his gym, give me a call. And I had him on speakerphone, he just recorded the speaker, it had just the right amount of static. It sounded like he was actually chasing someone. So I stood in for dispatch, and I was, I was real happy with how that came out. Did you boom everything, or did you have lavaliers? We had a boom and a shotgun. I had my shotgun. shotgun. Like, yeah, about the echoes of the mill and stuff, how did you go around to get rid of that? Because I know that could be well, sometimes. I, I just put music over most of it. 
Yeah. <laughs> My sound designer's name is Mauricio Paulon, and he's a, a sound designer from Brazil that, that lives in Los Angeles, and he was nice enough to you know, give us this, this rich sound that we hear. Yeah. Congratulations, you clearly had me drawn in because in one of the final scenes when my neighbor moved slightly, I, I nearly screamed. <laughs> Obviously, you're doing color correction and design. A little like bit, yeah. Yeah, I, I took some of the color of the middle away, desaturated it a, it a bit, and uh, changed the interrogation to black and white. Because it was so fast moving, I wanted the interrogation to have a very distinct style so that it wouldn't be too confusing going back and forth from the chase to the interrogation. It was, it was all about improvising, you know, we, we, we wrote and shot it in 24 hours, so okay. all of the decisions had to be made on impulse. Right. I had kind of a basic idea of how it was going to be edited, so what I did was I just kept the camera moving, and some of the transitions were made in the motion, the flashbacks were made between <coughs> the motion present day to the interrogation. Uh, one transition Tommy actually came up with, when he brings the elevator door down, he says, let's bring a flashback right over there. It doesn't look like, it looks much more thought out than Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, it really does. <laughs> yeah. it, it really does, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I won't be as spontaneous right. in the feature, but I hope to have the same energy. Since we finished it, it premiered at the Zyterian, and then it premiered at the Sacramento Horror Film Festival in uh, California, so we got a really good response there. In watching this, to me, it seems like this could be expanded into a feature project. The feature is going to be kind of like a, a crime thriller horror like Seven. You might see a little bit of The Departed in there and Alfred Hitchcock and all of the other influences I've taken in since Mom spoon fed me in front of the source. I'm enjoying the process, you know, the process of writing. It's, it's actually taken me almost a year to figure out what attacked the cop at the end. <laughs>